My name is Tanisha Ford, and I am the uh, Marketing and Communications Manager at our Pride New Jersey. I am an African-American woman with indis of an indiscriminate age with, um, normally you would see some natural black curly hair, but today I'm wrapped in a pink turban with gold frame glasses, a gray turtleneck with a couple of uh, necklaces, gold necklaces. Um, I will respond to any pronouns so long as it's done respectfully. I'm coming to you today from our offices in Burlington, New Jersey, the ancestral home of the Lenny Lenape people. Uh, just a little housekeeping for us all. Um, Closed captioning is available and you can do, choose that um, by clicking show captions below in your toolbar of the Zoom um, screen. If you have any questions at all, please drop them into the Q&A or a chat as they, um, as they come to you. We are gonna have a question and answer session around 1045 um, and I will be aggregating them and um, facilitating them for that uh, portion of the presentation. Um, keep your eye out on the chat for any links or other resources that we may share. Um, we are recording today's webinar and we will share that video along with the slide deck. So if you want to go back and reference anything or to share it with your colleagues that might not have been able to make it today, we invite you to do that. Also to get the best view of this presentation, make sure uh, your Zoom is on gallery. Uh, your, I'm sorry, your gallery view is on speaker view. Um, so quick, quick overview of the webinar. Uh, we'll be hearing from Alicia Yervez of U Alicia Yervez Creative in just a moment. Alicia will discuss with you how to identify objectives and define your target audience. Um, uh, Alicia is the founder of Alicia Yervez Creative. Creative an award-winning marketing design agency based on the Jersey Shore um, that provides services in brand design, web design, content, uh, content strategy, and monthly marketing support. In addition, Alicia offers a variety of educational resources, downloads, and courses that help small, small business organizers, business owners. This daylight savings time has been working on me, everyone, so please give me some grace. Um, it's It helps small business owners with marketing, branding, and so much more. Um, in addition, Alicia has been featured in Canvas Rebel um, and is a recipient of Box Office Manager's Frontline Award. The agency was named as one of New Jersey's best social media marketing agencies in designrush.com, as well as New Jersey's best digital marketing and design consultancy by Lux Life Magazine. So we are really thrilled to have her. Um, uh, she is a delight. And without any further ado, I bring you Alicia Gervais. Thank you so very much. Um, again, my name is Alicia Yervis. I'm the founder of Alicia Yervis Creative. I'm so happy to be here today. Um, my pronouns are she, her. I'm uh, 41 years old. I'm a Caucasian woman with long, curly, dark blonde hair and blue eyes. I'm wearing a gray top and a long necklace with a purple pendant. And I'm coming to you today from my colorful home office. Behind me is a bright pink sequined curtain. And my home office is located in Ocean, New Jersey, the ancestral home of the Lenny Lenape people. Next slide, please. <clears throat> um, so I just wanna say thank you so much to um, the folks at Art Pride New Jersey and uh, Jersey Arts. Thank you so much for the invite, Jim. I've known him for a long time. Um, I'm really excited to talk with you all today about the exciting topic of social media content strategy so we can nerd out a little bit. I love to do this stuff, so let's get started. Next slide. Um, just a quick intro to me, I spent many years at Two River Theater and Cal Basie Theater in Red Bank, New Jersey. I was on the marketing staff of both organizations um, and including when social media was brand new. When I worked at the Basie, um, you know, Instagram did not even exist yet. Um, and I started kind of honing my skills there and uh, teaching workshops on behalf of the organization for other organizations, you know, teaching uh, other businesses how they can use social media. 
to market their business. Um, and over time, I started to help people on the side with their small business, you know, uh, learning social media, um, learning how they can tell their story online more effectively. Next slide, please. And eventually went out on my own and created my own uh, digital marketing and design company. Um, and I love what I do, but I also still love to help arts organizations succeed in the digital world. Um, and I love helping them understand, you know, how much they have going for them and all of the lovely goodies that you have um, in your archive and in your organization that can be turned into awesome content. Next slide. So today, um, this is a snapshot view of the four building blocks of a successful social media content strategy to kind of give you just a quick look at where we're headed today. Um, block number one is creating clear objectives and identifying your target audiences. Block two is clarifying your brand. Block three is the creative and publishing phase. And block four is maximizing reach and engagement. Next slide. Um, and throughout this whole presentation, I just want to remind you to please just take whatever's useful, leave the rest. Um, everything that I'm presenting here is, you know, my suggestions based on my experience and my experience with clients. Um, but just take whatever's useful and leave the rest. I'm going to keep things moving in today's presentation. We're going to have time at the end for any questions. So please hold your questions until then. But I'm just going to keep this going. All right, next slide. So the first building block, as I said, of a successful social media content strategy is creating clear objectives and identifying your target audiences. So this is so you know exactly what you want your content to do, who you want to attract with the content that you make, what they care about, and how to speak to them. And the first building block really lays the foundation for everything else to come in the overall process of creating your social media content strategy. Next slide. So before you begin actually working on creating your strategy, it's really important to identify and outline whatever specific goals you might have. It doesn't make really much sense to spend time planning and creating content that does not correlate much to the goals you have in mind, right? Next slide. So ask yourself and your team, what do you want your content to really accomplish overall? Next slide. For example, do you want your social media content to build awareness? Do you want to increase sales? Do you want to generate leads? Next slide. Then you want to define your objectives. For example, so your objective might be to publish, let's say, four blog posts per month, or maybe create a social media campaign around an upcoming event, or get a certain number of people to respond to a survey, something like that. But no matter what, Determining the purpose of your content and setting specific goals will help you create a more focused and effective strategy. Next slide. So now let's talk about target audiences. So every organization should really take the time to identify their target audience and get them at their core. So you can reverse engineer that information into your content and messaging. Next slide. You wanna really understand them. And it's more than just your typical demographics, in my opinion. I think you should really take time to understand what they care about, how they think, what they're looking for in this exact moment. Um, also, what objections you might be able to combat with your messaging and your outreach. Um, you know, Thinking about what are their interests, their hobbies, their jobs. Um, what do they read or watch or listen to? What is their daily schedule like? What accounts or maybe other organizations or public figures do they follow? Where do they shop? What websites do they visit? Um, what do they like to do in their free time? But besides come to your organization, of course. Next slide. Also, you wanna look at the audiences of your peers or of other um, industry leaders or other organizations um, in your space because when you're able to read the comments on social media, um, you can kind of get ideas of what their audience cares about and responds to. So what patterns are you noticing? Um, what are people talking about? What are their really popular posts online? Um, what are folks spending time engaging with? What are maybe the questions that they're asking? All of that can help you reverse engineer the content that you decide to create for your organization. Next slide. Finally, 
Consider what platforms make the most sense for your target audience to be on, considering the markers that you've just explored. Remember, you do not need to be everywhere. And I want to say that louder for the people in the back. You do not need to be on every single platform. I promise. No matter what maybe the board is saying or the <laughs> your staff is saying, you don't need to be on every single platform. I really believe in choosing one or two, um, getting good at them, getting comfortable, building your community there. And then you can think about adding on other ones if you want to. But I really just don't subscribe to the idea that you have to be on every single platform because there are certainly platforms and apps and things like that that really don't make sense for you to be to, to even be on, depending on who your ideal, you know, your target audience is based on their interest, their age, and other demographics. And then, you know, you're spending time trying to create content on these platforms and you're not, you don't have an audience there or you're not getting engagement there. Okay, next slide. The second building block is clarifying your brand. This section is all about creativity time. This is playtime. This is fun. There are no bad ideas. You're going to dive into the heart of your organization's brand and explore how your content is going to sound and look and make people feel. And this section is so important for developing a social media content strategy that resonates with your audience because you're telling your unique story, mission, your creativity, your point of view. And developing a brand personality, content pillars, and aesthetics can help your business build a stronger, more recognizable brand that resonates with your target audience and sets you apart from the competition. So here we go, next slide. A brand persona is the voice and face of your brand in the digital world and it can make a significant impact on how your audience perceives and interacts with your organization. Next slide. How do you want your brand to sound when it speaks online? In written content, what should the tone be? Next slide. Here's some tips on how to create your organization's online persona. So number one, you want to define your brand's values and mission. Your online persona should reflect your brand's core values and mission. Take time to define these and ensure that they're reflected in your online presence as a whole. Number two, choose your tone of voice. The tone that you use in your online communication should be consistent with your brand's personality. So decide whether you wanna be formal or informal, friendly or serious, um, and ensure that your tone of voice is reflected in all your online interactions. And I just want to add an extra note here. I know that in the organization world, it may feel like your social media voice must be purely institutional, formal, professional, quote unquote, you know. Um, but I would love for you to challenge that thinking because social media is not a soapbox. It is a dinner party and you are the host. So I would think that you'd want to be welcoming, friendly, fun, interesting, relatable. Um, and to sound conversational, you should aim to be, aim to sound more natural in your copy. And it's just something to think about. Um, number three, you want to use visuals to reinforce your brand's personality. Um, your brand's visual identity is an important part of your whole online persona. And aim to be consistent with colors, fonts, and imagery to reinforce your brand's personality across all your online channels. And I know that that may change, for example, if you are a theater or a dance company and you're presenting a show that may have a certain look and you want to incorporate those graphics into your post, that's all fine and good. But for the moments in between, when you are promoting you know, institutional stuff, um, educational stuff, community stuff, like try to make it kind of match what your brand identity is, just to reinforce that look. And lastly, Engage with your audience. So your online persona should be engaging and interactive. Respond to comments and messages promptly and encourage your followers to share their opinions and feedback. Respond to all the messages that you get and show your audience that you really value what they're sharing with you. Next slide. Okay, so now we've come to one of my very favorite parts of this whole social media, social media content strategy process, content pillars. So when I say content pillars, these are really the main topics and themes that represent your organization and the core messages that you want to convey in your social media content strategy. So they are what your content is categorized by that all relate back to your business and resonate with your audience. 
And by strategically developing these pillars, you're giving yourself a roadmap to help ensure that you never struggle to come up with that next post ever again. Okay, so here are some key points to consider when developing content pillars. And there's a bunch of points on this next slide. So your content pillars should align with your brand values and mission statement. They should be relevant to your target audience and address their interests. You wanna choose three to five content pillars that cover a broad range of topics that your brand can speak to with authority. These pillars should be flexible enough to allow for new topics or trends that emerge. And your content pillars can be used to guide your content creation and ensure that your messaging is consistent across all channels. Like overall content pillars are an essential tool for really any brand or organization that wants to create a strong content strategy that really resonates. And the goal should be to create engaging content that shows off that unique brand persona we just talked about, represents, fully represents your organization. And that's sort of like a Venn diagram between what matters to you and what matters to your customers. And you wanna create content that provides value, inspiration, education, entertainment, and so on. And talking about Venn diagrams, next slide. This is just kind of a quick visual and it, my words got cut off here a little bit, sorry about that. But you can kind of see here, this is a way to envision it, okay? So what your organization cares about on one side, what your audience cares about on the other side and where they meet in the middle, those can be your content pillars. And you really want a good mix of topics. So you're not just buy tickets, buy tickets, buy tickets, buy tickets, you know, 24 seven, right? That's not social, that's spammy. <laughs> so we really wanna build authentic relationships here. Next slide. And to, to play on that kind of theme, you know, you wouldn't meet someone out of the blue and ask them to marry you on day one, right? Unless you're on some weird reality show. Um, you need to court them and allow them the opportunity to get to know you. And content pillars are a really powerful way that they can do that. And so here's some ideas to get you started. Next slide. Rather obvious content pillar right off the bat, upcoming events, right? So performances, events, classes, um, and this includes like any kinds of sales or promotions, you know, if you're having like a Black Friday sale or something like that. Next slide. Your company history. So the history of your organization, however long you've been around, whether it's months, whether it's decades, it's important to tell your brand story. This is where you can really go back into those archives that you may have, pull out old press photos, founding photos, um, you know, old videos, you know, all that kind of stuff is super interesting. When I worked at the Basie, we were going through um, renovations many, many times over the years. And uh, one of the most successful Facebook posts that we had in my time there was we were ripping out the seats in the balcony and we found old candy boxes from the 1920s. And, you know, seeing the weird flavors that people used to, <laughs> you know, have in the 20s and stuff, it created tons of engagement. Um, and it also told the story of, of the theater. Next slide. Um, your location. So whether that's your office, your marquee, your building, um, maybe the, the particular neighborhood that you're in or the region that you're in. Talk about your location, you know, make references to what's nearby, connect with your local community. Maybe there's inside jokes, you know, like things that you know about certain uh, geographic, uh, uh, you know, areas or whatever. All of that is engaging content. Next slide. People love seeing people. So by sharing photos of your leadership, your staff, team, uh, maybe your cast, volunteers, crew, all of that, you become more authentic to your audience and your potential customers. And people feel like they're really getting to know your organization as a whole, instead of just what's on your stage or just you know what's in your gallery. It's like, who are the people running the show? You know, Next slide. And certainly behind the scenes. So what makes your workplace culture unique? Don't take your typical day to day for granted. It's really interesting. Another example here, um, you know, I used to sometimes if I had a really crazy day in the marketing office and I just needed some peace and quiet, I would go and sit in the balcony of the theater on the floor and have my bagel and just enjoy the quiet. 
And, you know, there was a time where I was taking a picture of the stage. There was no one else in the theater. It was like 1600 seats, whatever. And I just posted like, oh, finally some peace and quiet, you know? And everyone is just like, oh my God, this is so cool that you work there. Wow. Like I would love to just take a break and just see this, the stuff that you see every day. Like, I wish I could see that at all. So think of how you can do that too, behind the scenes, you and your team. What is interesting that, you know, the, the, the general, um, the general public isn't used to seeing all the time, you know, all of that is really interesting content. Next slide, please. And if you want a really quick win, post animals, <laughs> staff pets, cast members bringing in their pets, you know, anything uh, about pets or, or animals in the neighborhood is sure to create engagement. Next slide. And then these are just extras and gimmies. So these can be things like posting lyrics or quotes, maybe opinions and polls, inspirational stuff, uh, relevant seasonal content, maybe some memes or, you know, playlist or book of the week. Also, there's social media holidays, right? So like, you know, National Kindness Day, um, National Theater Day, like those kinds of things. And then always you want to leave room for the unplanned as well such as if you need to shift gears regarding like if there's a national news story or something like that where you may want to actually pause on posting um, or maybe you wanna participate in a certain discussion that's happening online. So you wanna leave room uh, for, for those kinds of things. Next slide. All right, so now let's talk visuals. Next slide. What I'm really talking about here are the social media aesthetics, right? So colors, graphics, imagery, the emotional feel of your accounts because a picture says a thousand words, right? So this component works hand in hand with your brand persona and the content pillars that you just thought about. Your social media aesthetic can communicate your brand's message and values without the need for words. And it can also help create an emotional connection with your followers. So here's some tips to help you get started on deciding what direction, what visual direction you should take uh, for curating this on social media. Next slide. Um, you wanna research your competitors. Look at what they're doing. <laughs> Look at their social media, take note of their aesthetics, the type of content they post, um, what really seems to be resonating with their audience because this information, you can use it to differentiate what you do and create something unique. Next slide. Then you wanna choose a color scheme. And again, my, my slide got messed up here, so I apologize for that. But um, colors play a big role in creating that aesthetic for social media. So you wanna choose something that aligns with your brand identity. So like the logo you already have, possibly you know the colors that you're using in your institutional messaging, et cetera. You wanna pull that through everything um, and incorporate it into your content through graphics or through um, the colors that are in the background of certain photos or the videos that you make, right? Next slide. And you wanna use high quality visuals when you can. Visuals are really key to creating that strong aesthetic on social media. You wanna use high quality videos and photos that are visually appealing and align with your brand identity. And it doesn't mean that they need to be shot by a professional photographer because I know that's not always possible. Your phone will do just fine, but if you try to just be intentional with your photography efforts, at the very least, try your best to make sure that your photos have sufficient lighting and they're not blurry. Here's a few examples from the real world just to give you a visual idea of what I mean. Next slide. So Burger King here on the left. Burger King pulls in colors from their logo and branding in their graphics and photography and also mixes in humor, positive customer experiences and fun. You can look these up on Instagram to give you a better idea of the examples I'm showing here. Shucked Broadway, the musical Shucked, they have a cohesive color scheme and kind of a cheeky tone that plays off the unusual title of their musical. TD Bank utilizes their color scheme to present themselves as a trustworthy brand and community resource. And also green makes you think of money, right? And finally, Pepsi, they use color and a really unique um, way of using lighting and user-generated content um, to further tell their brand story uh, that Pepsi is a way of life. And so hopefully you can kind of start to see some examples here of how it's coming together. And I believe in the power of visuals big time when it comes to content strategy. Next slide. All right, moving right along. The third building block is the creative and publishing phase. So in this section, you're gonna learn how to organize your existing assets, plan out and create your future content and get it out there in a doable way, even if you're understaffed and you have no budget. 
So this is where you decide what you want to promote and when, and pick and choose what planning processes work for you. I'll also be sharing some convenient, like time-saving processes that are really easy to implement and replicate. Next slide. Okay, so first, I love a good brainstorm session. <laughs> they are sure to help you and your team get stuff out of your heads and onto the page or onto the screen so you can begin to bring order to things and decide how to best take action. Brainstorming is a powerful tool that I rely on again and again. It can really help you generate new and innovative ideas for your content. So here's a few tips for your next brainstorm session. Next slide. One, you wanna make sure that you and your team understands the purpose and objectives of the brainstorm session. This will help focus the discussion, keep it somewhat on track. Also remember there is no criticism allowed here. All ideas are welcome, even if they seem unconventional or out of the box. And then if you're like me and you struggle with writing slower than your brain thinks, <laughs> you might consider doing an audio recording of the session or maybe taping it like on video. Um, so you can listen back later or watch back later and take notes. So you can capture every little idea breadcrumb that, that comes up. And lastly, it can be super helpful to use visual aids. So obviously notebook and pen, dry erase board, you know, post-it notes on the wall. Um, these can all help organize ideas and make it easier to see the connections that may exist between them. Next slide. So how to begin the process. So you're gonna make a list of all the existing content and assets you may already have. Identify which of these existing assets can fit within those chosen content pillars we talked about earlier. Then you're going to categorize the existing content by those topics or themes. Look for opportunities to repurpose or update things. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more later. Um, then you're going to leverage across the different platforms and analyze the performance. So by taking this strategic approach to brainstorming your existing content and assets, you can create a more cohesive and effective content marketing strategy without having to always reinvent the wheel. And by following these steps, you can ensure that your content brainstorming session leads to the creation of content that actually makes an impact. Next slide. Um, another important piece of this ongoing strategy that goes right along with the brainstorming is to really get good at beginning to organize your assets into an easily accessible content library. And a content library is really just a bank of pre-existing content that can be used for various purposes, such as marketing, sales, education, et cetera. And the idea is that it lives in one centralized spot for easy access. So it typically includes a variety of formats, such as, you know, maybe it's uh, text, you know, copy, um, it's photos, videos, maybe it's audio files or articles. Um, and this content, the, the content that's in a library works best when it's just organized and categorized uh, for, for easy retrieval. So then instead of sifting and scrolling through a bazillion <laughs> folders or, you know, your camera roll on your phone, or maybe looking back through emails and text messages to find that thing, right? Um, you have what you need every time. It's nicely organized. You know, a stitch in time saves nine, right? Next slide. Here's a few tips to help you with creating and organizing your content library. So one, you wanna create a simple folder system. You want to, you can use a, a tagging or a CRM system if your organization has one to make it even easier. I would consider using cloud storage as well. Always keep your stuff backed up, but this way if it's in the cloud, you can access it from anywhere. Um, and, and as I said, back up your files often. But I really think creating some sort of, even if it's just a basic, 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 content library of some kind in the palm of your hand will really help out you and your team. Next slide. Okay, so now let's talk about content calendars. So this is essentially a written or a digital schedule that outlines what content you'll be creating or who will be creating it, um, when it'll be published and where it will be shared. Next slide. So let's start this process by determining the proper cadence. So like the rhythm and ratio for your posting. In general here, I really suggest posting on a somewhat regular schedule, such as once a day or a few times a week. However, it's important to find a balance that works for both you and your followers. Um, experiment a bit and find a flow that works best for your organization. 
because finding a balance between educational and fun content and promotional content can be a tricky task. So a good rule of thumb is to follow the 80-20 mix, which I show here on this slide. Um, this means aiming for 80% educational, informational, fun content and 20% promotional content. So like approximately 80% of your posts inform or educate, et cetera, and 20% promote your business or drive those conversions. And I like to suggest three to five informational pieces of content before promoting an event or a service or a product or something. Um, and don't forget to include Instagram and Facebook stories here as well, because lots of people only hang out in stories. So you don't want to skip that. Um, but when you consistently share valuable content that speaks to your ideal audience, you can create those promotional posts and sell with confidence because you've earned the right to sell at that point. Um, and once you know what content you want to create for that week or that month, you can make a plan for how you'll create it. Think about how often you want to publish in general, how you'll promote it, like what platform will it be on, um, and what assets are needed for any post and who will make it, like the visuals and the captions, et cetera. Next slide. Then you want to think about how you can work backwards whenever possible. You want to give your audience plenty of runway, plenty of lead time for them to learn about and plan for your event. This means I'd physically plot out on a calendar sheet in a visual way multiple impressions of promoting that event, starting with the drop date and several more times leading up to it. So you'd plug in your promotional post on the day of and then work backwards to plug in your supplemental post leading up to it. Next slide. We all know that it's important to promote all the things going on at your organization. Um, and if a tree falls in the forest and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? Well, similarly, if you put something on sale or offer some sort of fun opportunity or are running an important campaign and you don't announce it or actively regularly keep promoting it, how will people know about it and take the specific actions you want them to take? Next slide. The main thing I want you to remember here is that promoting something once is just not enough. So working backwards allows you to be strategic about giving your promotion plenty of juice so it's interspersed multiple times among your other posts. Next slide. There are tons and tons of examples out there if you just Google content calendar template, if you'd like to follow a pre-existing structure, or you can even create one in Canva from an existing template they have there or from scratch using Excel or Google Sheets. Next slide. Another way to simplify your marketing life, even with limited staff and budget, is to repurpose your content. So remember, no one has seen all of your content. As you develop your content strategy and grow your brand awareness, you will be a, you will always be welcoming new audiences and new eyeballs. So feel empowered to reuse your content because it will be new to them. Repurposing content is an effective way of making the most of your existing stuff. It not only saves time, but it also helps you reach a wider audience by presenting your content in different formats. So to start, you want to look back through your past social media or website content or even email content, take some of the best performing stuff and write about it on other sites or platforms or using other methods. So here's some more specific examples of how you can do that. Next slide. Consider turning a blog post into several social media posts. You can create a bunch of posts from a single blog by creating visually appealing graphics and quoting key points. Next slide. Maybe there's an Instagram story that got a lot of engagement and it's just sitting in your archive, but now you can download it and turn it into a reel. Next slide. Transcribe your podcasts and turn them into blog posts or articles. This can help you reach a, wi reach a wider audience. Next slide. Use your most open newsletter and turn it into a podcast or a video script. Next slide. Create visually appealing infographics from your written content by turning some data into interesting factoids. This can be an effective way of sharing your content on social media. And this is where you can really lean on your development team, right? For those yummy financial factoids, turn them into something fun visually. Next slide. Here's another cool trick. Let's say you start with your content pillar and you choose a topic you want to focus on for your idea. Then you could write copy for a post about it. Then you could use that written copy as the caption for a regular static post. Then you could turn that into the graphics of, or the wording that would be on a graphic. Then you could turn that into a blog post. And then you could edit down the blog post a bit and turn it into a newsletter. And then you could pull sections of that and turn that into a carousel for Instagram. 
And then you can turn it into a video, you know, rinse and repeat, you know, the possibilities are endless. Next slide. Okay, we are almost done here. The fourth and final building block is maximizing reach and engagement. Next slide. This is where we'll explore the importance of engagement, encouraging it on your own content and participating in it yourself with other accounts. Next slide. Stop obsessing over creating conversions and get obsessed with creating conversations instead. Next slide. So why is this important? Social media allows you to connect with your audience on a more personal level. By responding to comments and posts, you can build relationships and foster a sense of community around your brand. When your followers feel valued and heard, they're more likely to keep coming back for more. And when your followers engage with your posts by liking and commenting and sharing and saving, the algorithms of most social media platforms will likely promote your content to a wider audience. Next slide. So here are some uh, specific examples of different types of engagement. Um, there's likes, comments, DMs, replies, shares, retweets, saves, clicks, mentions, right? We kind of know all of these, right? Next slide. But it's important to understand that there's different weights to the engagement actions. So I'm simplifying it a bit here, but try to just keep this in mind. Likes are like the weakest thing followed by meaningful comments of more than four words. So like not just emojis, you know, where someone's actually saying like a sentiment of some kind. Then shares and then saves matter the most. So think of how you can make it easy for your audience to do the things that matter the most. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the ways you can encourage engagement on your own comments via social media. So first, post or email something and ask people to write back and weigh in with their opinion or their advice. People love giving their point of view and this allows you to learn more about them. Ask relevant, timely questions and listen to the responses. Next slide. Go in stories and ask people to read the new post and comment. That's an easy one, right? Next slide. Interactive stuff like polls, quizzes, stickers, questions, Things like test your knowledge or what kind of ice cream are you, right? As long as you try to make it relevant to your uh, organization, they're a lot of fun. Next slide. Literally just asking people to share the post. Sometimes the simplest things are the things we forget. Next slide. Encourage people to save it, similar to what I was saying about sharing. Next slide. Tag people in comments or in the photo itself because then it goes to them and then maybe they're enticed to share it. Next slide. Give some folks some shout outs via the caption or in stories. Next slide. And ask for their feedback. Next slide. You could also go live. Maybe that's even a cast member or an artist doing it. You could even let them host the account for the day. Next slide. Post a social media scavenger hunt via photos that people send you. Next slide. Dim, zoomed, or slightly blurry photos to encourage like guessing of a sneak peek of some kind, something coming soon. Next slide. Do a giveaway or a contest. That's an easy one. And next slide, post did you know type stuff or different factoids. Next slide. Send DMs. And by the way, a bonus tip here, you can stand out even more by sending audio messages or like a video of you and your team messaging somebody. It really helps you stand out. Next, if you've got a team, like I was saying, involve them, um, involve your staff, your board, uh, interns, encourage them to share your stuff, your announcements, your promotions, et cetera, really helps set the expectation for how they help you with distribution. Next slide. Because one of the coolest things about encouraging engagement are the amazing golden nuggets of, of goodness that you get back via testimonials, good vibes, growth, feedback, you know, not to mention sales, because engagement can actually help your audience become an extension of your marketing team. When they participate, they're increasing the chances of your content being shown to more folks, which literally helps you market your business, which is pretty cool, right? So make sure you give them good stuff to react to. And finally, this last section here, next slide, this is all about mixing and mingling. So next slide, let me take a sec here to remind you. Again, social media is a two-way street. Building an engaged audience means you need to actually interact with them. You can't expect conversation if you're not part of the conversation. So to drive more engagement, 
it's crucial to acknowledge your followers and respond to their comments because every comment counts and it signifies that someone took the time to view your post and share their thoughts. So why not respond? Next slide. However, building engagement also takes time and effort in other ways, like spending time conversing on posts from others. Start conversations in the comments that are not your own and uh, ask questions, respond here and there, reply to stories and stickers. Um, but the most important thing here is always be listening. Listen to local and national conversations taking place around a certain topic so you can join that conversation. And one of the ways you can do this is by following certain hashtags. So you're always gonna catch the latest posts that are categorized there. See what your neighborhood and your community is talking about. And this is not only an opportunity to engage, but it could also inspire you to create your own posts around that topic. And one of the ways that I suggest that you do this, next slide, is to create a daily or a weekly engagement routine for your team. But no matter what, next slide, listen first and contribute second. And so to wrap up, next slide, these are some specific methods you can use to measure the results of your engagement efforts. Track, but don't obsess over <laughs> your, your follower count, okay? Like it matters, but like it's kind of a vanity metric. So just don't get too hung up on that. Monitor your likes, your comments, and your shares. Analyze your web traffic, measure your click-through click rates, excuse me, and monitor your brand mentions. You know, you wanna keep mentions of your brand on social media, um, keep an eye on that. Um, and by regularly tracking all of that, you can really gain valuable insights into the effectiveness of the strategy you've been working on. So that's a wrap. So in our chat today, we've gone over the four building blocks of a successful content strategy. We discussed how to identify clear objectives and define your target audience, ensuring that every post serve, serves a purpose. Then we went over how to get to the heart of your organization's brand, helping you clarify your brand voice, your content pillars and aesthetics to resonate with your audience. Then we shifted into the creative and publishing phase with strategies for, craft, for crafting compelling content, even without a giant staff. And finally, we went over ways to maximize reach and engagement, fostering a vibrant online community around your arts organization. So thank you so much for being here today. I hope you feel inspired and equipped to elevate your arts marketing game. And you can find me on all the socials or come say hello at aliciayervis.com. And now I'm happy to, hand, to answer any questions from the group. I'm also going to take a sip of water. So Tanisha, back to you. <laughs> yes, outstanding. Um, generally speaking, should content be short in social media posts? Does it matter? Well, it's an interesting conversation that's happening right now. There is a difference if you were to look up short term, uh, short form content, long form content. Um, there's differing opinions on that. For me, I would say it depends on what kind of post it is. For example, if you were making a reel, let's just say, um, the reel itself, like the actual visuals, the video itself, that should be short and, and um, uh, easily uh, grabs their attention. Maybe something that is like loops a lot of times, but then you can go into way more detail in the caption itself. But of course, you know, there are limits to how many characters can be in the caption of a post. So you have to consider that too. However, something I would suggest is like, if you were going to share a big long blog or a big long article or a big long, you know, email or something like that for social media, I would probably keep the visual or the video really short and then put a link so that they can view the whole thing. Um, but again, it, it comes down to testing it, right? So like you could always try it out see how people are responding. Um, and then that can give you a clue as to how you should do it the next time. I know, uh, speaking from experience, sometimes like when our artistic director would decide to, um, like he would give us a letter to post, you know, or like a, um, a blog on his behalf and we would post it in full, you know, full length. Um, and that would do well for us because it was kind of like a departure from the norm. It was like, here's a letter from our artistic director. And our audience was able to determine like, oh, this is going to be a letter that's going to be long. I'm going to read it right here. Um, because the other thing is most social media platforms really like when you try via your content to get people to spend as much time on the platform itself as possible, as opposed to directing them off the platform, right? They want to keep you on that platform. So that's another thing to consider as well. 
Great, thank you very much, ma'am. All right, we have um, five, six questions and then we have uh, just about three minutes left. So I wanna encourage everybody to please um, pop your questions in, even if we don't get to them. Um, uh, and we will put them in our follow-up email and, and ask Alicia to maybe answer them for the follow-up email. Uh, so, uh, Emmanuel asked, I'm sorry, Dana asked first, do you have any suggestions related to social media advertising and suggested audience or keywords to find the right folks? Sure. So it, again, this depends on, you know, your organization, um, your budget, you know, what you're able to, to, to do and stuff, because for me, we at the time um, that I was at Two River Theater, at least, um, you know, Facebook advertising was relatively new. We worked with um, an agency to teach us how to, uh, you know, uh, navigate the ads platform. Um, and then they were kind of like an offsite consultant that was there for us if we needed help. But at that point, we knew how to run them on our own. Um, so the thing is with with uh, Facebook ads, it changes a lot. So it can be frustrating when you feel like, okay, I've got this under control. I'm really good at this. And then they, you know, knock the legs out from the table and then they change everything. Can be frustrating. However, again, with some of the tips I gave in this presentation, you know, thinking about your ideal client, the audiences you want to reach for a particular organization or a particular event, right? Because sometimes your, your audiences change. If there's all different, if you're um, a theater that presents all different kinds of shows or, you know, different kinds of, um, uh, uh, what is the, uh, exhibitions, right? It may be different people that you're trying to attract for each thing. Um, so almost to think about that on a per event basis um, and thinking about, okay, the people that I want to attract to this, what do they read? What do they watch on TV? What are they like? Where do they live? All that kind of stuff. When you use um, the Facebook ads manager, you can literally target down and reach people who are, you know, maybe they're a fan of the History Channel or they love Broadway shows or whatever. And then you can filter it further by where they live, et cetera. Um, but on, on, in terms of keywords, it really depends on your organization. And again, like the event that you're trying to promote. And I can go into more detail on this after this um, in the follow-up questions, if you just remind me. Wonderful. Um, thank you so very much. I the questions are pouring in, Alicia. You should know. Like there's like a, <laughs> there's, there's so many questions. We don't have time to. But what I would like to do to reiterate is I'd like to send you those questions, and maybe sure. in the next year or so, you give like a couple of answers, and then we can include that in the follow up email. Sure. Um, Steve asked specifically that everyone I'm sure is curious about is whether or not there's going to be a recording. This is being recorded. It will be up on our YouTube within the next two days, as well as a follow up email and the slide deck. So this all will be accessible to you. Um, we're going to do a little uh, recap uh, 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 Jersey, I'm sorry, Art Pride New Jersey um, information, and then we'll be concluded. Um, so I just want to say real quickly that I like to second Alicia's advocation of sharing your content frequently. Um, on uh, social platforms, thank you very, very much for saying that. Next slide, please. Um, so Alicia talked very much about um, last uh, uh, presentation was the last one of this year, I'm sorry. And like an appropriate, we thought this was an appropriate time to do a recap of the JAM webinar offerings um, for 2023. This year was focused on how best to tell your story in as many different ways as possible within your current capacity. So our, in February, we did um, PR, uh, not ER, in which Brandon Zecker presented uh, a jam meeting um, where we delved into the intricacies of PR and offered practical advice for creating impactful campaigns. This too is on our YouTube channel. Next slide. That was then followed by uh, Everyday Advocacy in May with Anne-Marie Miller and Howard um, uh, 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 I always want to call him Adam Levine. Um, how are you doing? Um, and they shared how you can have everyday advocacy within your organization. Anne Marie emphasized the role of arts marketers as natural advocates. And Howard was strong in talking about how you can pivot your strategy to strategies 
for re-engaging audiences post-pandemic. Um, in addition, in September, Dr. Neil Bardhan came through and uh, he asked the you jammers to ponder how well your organizations know you in 2023. Um, and so thinking about that, in our 2024, we're going to talk to you, um, tell your story to various constituents um, for, um, Sorry, I lost my thread of thought. Now we're gonna go and tell you how you can tell your story to various constituents. Uh, slow a little bit down. Um, now we are planning to focus on audience engagement and how to engage audiences into giving audiences. This is especially important as we are launching our new website in spring 2024. Next slide. The NewJerseyArts.com website, two slides back. Um, Okay, um, moving on. Uh, I am thrilled to also welcome Isaac Cerna Diaz as our new digital content manager. When you are submitting your, purchase, your pitches and seasonal campaign offerings and updating the new website, which will be launching in the spring of 2024, um, this gentleman will be your point of contact and we are absolutely thrilled to have him as a part of our team. Uh, next slide. Uh, speaking of seasonal campaigns, the holiday guide submissions are open and the campaign will launch November 16th. Next slide. In addition to seasonal campaigns, your JAM Network membership unlocks a treasure trove of benefits designed to elevate your presence in the art scene. Now we will ask you to take advantage of the feature stories on jerseyarts.com by submitting pitches for upcoming events and you'll join a lineup of innovative and cooperative marketing initiatives um, that continue to sharpen your skills through more professional development like workshops like what we experienced today. Next slide. So, as you're building out your audiences and learning how to better talk to your audiences, we want you to stop the guesswork and let your data find the target. Start making decisions based on the valuable insights that you can gain by subscribing to um, our community database of more than 1.5 million unique households with the Audience Insight Manager. Next slide. Um, Registration for AIM begins November 14th and ends on January 18th. And uh, when whether you choose to engage in list trading or you use your data to, for internal research, these insights you'll gain from AIM will help you target your marketing materials, identify potential new donors, set benchmarks for diversifying your audiences, um, and even guide your programming. This there really is no limit to what you can do with this powerful new information. Um, and AIM lets you have it all for a fraction of a cost um, than going it alone. And in light of what uh, Alicia was speaking about today, this will also give you some great insights into um, your audiences. Next slide. Um, so I want to thank you, Alicia, for your wonderful presentation. It was so incredibly helpful. I want to thank Jim Atkinson, who has been behind the scenes, um, pushing the slides along for your te technical support. And I want to thank each and every one of you for taking your time out this morning to join us for this jam meeting. Our next jam uh, meeting will be in February, uh, the exact date is not set yet, but keep an eye out for more information about that in January. And again, um, we will be sharing the, the, the questions as well as the slides and the, the, the video in the next couple of days. Thank you so much for having me, by the way. I just wanted to say this was so wonderful and I really appreciate the opportunity and hello to everybody. And I also am sending a packet of resources, which Tanisha will send to you as well. Outstanding. And with that, I say farewell, Avita Zane, goodbye, and have an amazing week, one and all. Good day. <laughs>